right this second. There's a lot on the line, playing out live all across our country. And it all leads to this. It's your voice, your vote. Now reporting live from ABC News Election Night Headquarters in Times Square. Here again, George Stephanopoulos. And welcome back to Election 2014. Here with our whole team in ABC News headquarters. And all night long, we've been telling you about Senate control. That's the big prize tonight. Republicans need to pick up six Senate seats to get control of the Senate. And they just picked up their fifth. And it is a big one, the state of Colorado, where Congressman Cory Gardner has defeated the incumbent Democrat, Senator Mark Udall. Uh, Cory Gardner, a congressman, got into the race after another Tea Party candidate dropped out, facing Mark Udall, who won six years ago, was not able to prevail. This this time around, faced a lot of criticism, David Muir, for his focus on women's issues. What did the exit polls show? Uh, this is incredible, especially when you think Colorado Obama won twice. It's where he started with the nomination in 2008. Look at this. Job performance, 55 disapproved of the president. And here's how they voted when you break it down. They clearly went for Cory Gardner. 82% of those who disapproved of Obama voting for Cory Gardner. And look at this. The women in Colorado, that one issue race aimed towards women. Udall picks up 52% of the vote. But the key thing to remember here, George, is he won 15%, 15 points with women the last time around. And, he, and Cory Gardner edged into that quite impressively. So despite that focus, Cory Gardner able to cut into the women's vote. That's enough to give him the win. I want to go straight to Nate Silver, our forecaster from 538. Coming into the night, you had a 74% chance of Republicans taking control of the Senate. This win in Colorado uh, for, the, for the Republicans really ups that. Yeah, they're at 86% now. I think that's still a bit conservative given how many other bullets Democrats have to dodge in North Carolina, in Virginia. In Kansas, Greg Orman, the independent, is behind every other uncalled state. The data doesn't look very good for Democrats. So they really have to draw to not just an inside straight, but sort of two inside straights in a row here, it almost feels like. 86% conservative. Okay. Thank you, Nate Silver. <laughs> Let me take this to Matt Dowd. Big disappointment here for Democrats. You're wearing a purple tie. This was considered a purple state, one of those that could go back and forth between Democrats and Republicans. But Democrats thought after those two wins by President Obama, they were solidifying their control. Well, yeah, I, I think the Democrats actually thought it was no longer a purple state. They thought it was like a light blue state. They thought it was a state that they were going to have a lock on in 2016. And now we show it's another one of the states that's coming out of tonight. As we see across the aisle, Virginia, this state, there's a lot of purple states still out there, a lot of bellwether states in this country that we face going forward into 2016. And, and that's because, David Pluff, one of the things we have to also look at uh, right here, of course, you're President Obama's former campaign manager and strategist. And one of the concerns of Democrats coming into tonight, the people voting in 2014, a very different electorate from those voting in 2012. Yeah, I mean, it's like night and day, really. We're at a, a fascinating time in our politics where the people voting presidential years look much different. This is a big surprise to me, though, because it's a big margin. Uh, and, you know, it might be that Gardner would have won this in a presidential year. Uh, Mark Udall ran for with us in 08. We campaigned closely with him in 12. He was a great fit for the state, so it's a big surprise. I mean, Jefferson County, which is the quintessential swing county in Colorado, uh, looks like Gardner is going to win. So I think Democrats need to spend a lot of time digging into Colorado and figure out exactly what happened here. And Alicia Menendez, what are we seeing on social media on the Colorado race? You know, when we talk about Twitter and Facebook, that tells us what people are talking about. When you look at Google search terms, it tells you what people are curious about. So take a look at this. This is what people were asking about these two candidates. Mark Udall's voting record, abortion, gun control, net neutrality, all big issues in this race. You take a look at Cory Gardner, his voting record in the U.S. House of Representatives, Cory Gardner on abortion, which again, Udall tried to make a big issue in this race. How old is Cory Gardner? Uh, his age? had come up, and then his family comparing the Udall family and the Gardner's more humble beginnings. Okay, now we, that's the Senate. That's the story for the Senate right now. We're still waiting for more results to come in. As Nate Silver said, those close races in Virginia, North Carolina, Iowa still to come. But I want to take a look back at that governor's race we just called a few moments ago. Governor Scott Walker in Wisconsin prevailing uh, there up against Mary Burke, uh, the, the Democrat businesswoman, put up a pretty tough fight. But Nicole Wallace, I want to bring this one to you right away because Scott Walker, this was a race that drew in a lot of outside funding. He was a candidate uh, who was given a lot of early look for the 2016 race. They thought if he lost this, that wouldn't happen. He's right now back in contention. And he and Chris Christie, another much talked about uh, prospect for 2016, had a big tussle about a week ago about whether or not the national Republicans had put enough money and resources into this race. So he's a fighter. He's not afraid to fight with the national Republican establishment, which a lot of people think is a, a very important trait in our next nominee. And I think the fact that he pulled it out by such a decisive margin bodes very well. People will definitely be talking 
talking about him tomorrow morning while we're still caffeinating ourselves as a <laughs> very viable presidential prospect. And and John Carl, you're just coming in another governor's race. Uh, Rick Schneider in Michigan, uh, we're projecting as a winner as well. These were the two uh, two states that President Obama campaigned in for the gubernatorial candidates for the Democrats, and now Republicans have pulled them both off. Both purple states. Uh, Republicans will be feeling very good about this tonight. You just have to go back to the issues. You just have to go back to the massive discontent we've seen out there that points right back to President Obama and what people are thinking about. They were thinking about the economy, but they couldn't really, they weren't really, the Democrats weren't really talking about the economy. I remember uh, Bill Richardson, former governor of New Mexico, on a few weeks ago on this week saying they should have been talking about the economy. They should have been talking about jobs. Instead, they let the foreign policy agenda go. That was in the Senate, but here in the governor's races, Matthew, Dad, you saw these two races, Michigan and Wisconsin, where, where governors were able to force stall that rejection of incumbents. Yeah, absolutely. And I am having grown up there and having been born in Detroit, I think that Michigan actually, it's a very interesting sign I think you're seeing out of Michigan. You have a Democrat carry it overwhelmingly in the Senate, a Republican winning the governor's race. I think one of the things out of tonight that I think we, we're, we need to look more into is the fact that the independent voters, we had Demo almost equal number of Democrats and independent and Democrats and Republicans turn out and equal about 95% of the partisans support their candidate, but independent voters tonight across the country supported Republicans by 10 points. And that is especially... That determined the election. And we're going to look at that in that upcoming state of Iowa as well. We do want to go back to the Senate right now. We've been talking about the state of Virginia all night, a lot closer than people expected to see there. Mark Warner facing a very stiff challenge from the uh, Republican, former chair of the Republican National Committee, Ed Gillespie, right now with the votes coming in, 92% in. It's dead even, uh, 49 to 49, Warner up by a few, few thousand votes right there. Bill Crystal, I remember just a couple weeks ago on this week you said watch out for Ed Gillespie I and a few others chuckled turned out that this he put on a much stiffer fight than anyone else expected he did it was under the radar screen and uh, maybe the Democrats were a little complacent uh, but it is a swing state it, it mirrors the nation perfectly and Gillespie ran a good campaign Warner thought he could coast on having been governor and having uh, won easily in 2008 uh, it turned out that I think in that state Ed Gillespie put forward a positive conservative alternative to Obamacare. He's the only Republican Senate candidate, I think, across the nation who laid out a detailed plan. I think he ran a policy-heavy campaign. I don't know how many voters read all 32 pages of his plan, <laughs> but I think they had the sense that he was a serious guy who would, wanted to go to Washington to uh, enact a reform conservative agenda. He wasn't just running against Obama. He really tried to make that clear, and whether he wins or loses, and it looks like it'll be within 0.1 percent, I think that paid off for him. Yeah, we'll see if it's enough. You know, but that, that brings up an interesting point. He, you're, I think you're right. He was the only one who put out a, a full, full uh, replacement for Obamacare. But John Carl, we would have thought a year ago that Obamacare would have been the center of so many of these campaigns. It really wasn't. It, it really wasn't. If you, if you look at the issues that ads were run on, it's still more than any other one issue Republicans ran ads on Obamacare. But by the end of the campaign, uh, it was virtually invisible in a lot of these races, as it was, you know, more general Obama's leadership, a lot of the foreign 20, policy. ads yeah. about terrorism. Yeah. Okay, Jeff Zeleny is covering this campaign uh, as well. He's in Kentucky tonight, but he's watching the Virginia race uh, very closely. What are you hearing from the campaigns about what vote is left out there? What are they expecting? Is it possible this goes to a recount? Well, George, it's very possible it goes to a recount because the loser of the race uh, can request it if they're within 1%, and it's almost sure to be with 1%. But a top senator, a top Democratic senator told me tonight that if Mark Warner loses, this is the key definition of a wave. So we are watching Fairfax County just outside Washington, D.C. No one saw this coming. Republicans did not even invest money here to help. This is the surprise of the night if Ed Gillespie holds on. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Selling other races we're watching right now, Georgia. Georgia's still open where Michelle Nunn, uh, the, the daughter of the former senator, is facing David Perdue, a businessman. Uh, right now, 67% of the vote is in. Now, there's some, some right now you see Perdue has a pretty healthy lead, but there's a twist here in the state of Georgia. Um, if neither candidate gets above 50%, that there will be a runoff there as well, not just in Louisiana, which will be on December 6th, but there'll be a runoff in Georgia on January. January 6th. And then, and, and, uh, Matthew Dowd, let me bring this back to you uh, as well. If that happens, 
you could see more money pour into these states than you've probably seen in, in, in 20 other states over the rest of this campaign. Oh, absolutely. And especially if we're at this razor's edge where it's five votes Republicans pick up or six votes Republicans pick up, the amount of money that we'll spend in the next month in Louisiana and then over Christmas, if people think they're going to pay attention to Christmas shopping and not see ads in Georgia over the course of the time, it's going to be an amazing amount of thing if that holds. And one of the things they're really going to be fighting is voter fatigue uh, at that point as well. And, and John Carl, this could also also very much complicate uh, what will get done in Congress over the lame duck session and President Obama's whole approach with this outgoing Congress. <laughs> There's a lot left undone that the Congress pushed off until after the election needs to be done uh, in this lame duck session, including basic things, George, like funding the government and what will, you know, how will the Republicans play on that? We even have an attorney general uh, vacancy coming up. The president's going to announce his uh, nominee for attorney general, I expect, in the coming days. Uh, the question is, will he try to push it through while he still has a Democratic controlled Senate? They haven't rolled out. Okay, let's take a look at where things stand right now. We're still getting, counting votes in a lot of states right now. We've been following the race for the Senate. You see right there, five states have switched from Democrat to Republican. Five of the six uh, seats that the Republicans need right now. Of course, there's a lot still out there. We're still waiting for Iowa. We're still waiting for Georgia, Louisiana, Kansas, Alaska. A lot of states still out there. We have projected the Republicans will retain control of the House, probably pick up some seats there uh, as well. 36 governors at stake. And we We've just heard that Republicans are going to hold on to the big states of Michigan and Wisconsin. Democrats have picked up the state of Pennsylvania. So there's a lot more to come here tonight. A lot of votes left to count. We're going to be back talking more about 2016. Diane Sawyer is going to be here in just a minute. Times Square in New York City. You're watching ABC's live coverage of election night 2014.